Well, good Thursday to you all, dear ones, and welcome to this 11th day of January. It is day 11 in our journey through the Bible. Hello to everyone out there. My name's Hunter. I am your brother and Bible reading coach, someone who shows up every day to spend a little time together with you in the pages of the Bible. And we're going to let the Bible do what it does and point the way to the one who is the living Word of God, the one alone who has the words of life. And so we come from all around this world. We show up here with sisters and brothers to warm our hearts around the fires of God's love. That is who he is. And today we are in the book of Genesis. That's where we'll start in chapters 27 and 28. Then we go to Psalm 4, and we'll finish in Luke's Gospel, chapter 11. And I'm glad you're here. This is the word of the Lord, Genesis 27. One day when Isaac was old and turning blind, he called for Esau, his older brother, and said, My son, yes, my father, Esau replied, I'm an old man now and I don't know when I may die. Take your bow and a quiver full of arrows and go out into the open country to hunt some wild game for me. Prepare my favorite dish and bring it here for me to eat. Then I will pronounce the blessing that belongs to you, my firstborn son, before I die. But Rebekah overheard what Isaac had said to his son Esau. So when Esau left to hunt for the wild game, she said to her son Jacob, Listen, I overheard your father say to Esau, Bring me some wild game and prepare me a delicious meal. Then I will bless you in the Lord's presence before I die. Now, my son, listen to me. Do exactly as I tell you. Go out to the flocks and bring me two fine young goats. I'll use them to prepare your father's favorite dish. Then take the food to your father so he can eat it and bless you before he dies. But look, Jacob replied to Rebekah, My brother Esau is a hairy man, and my skin is smooth. What if my father touches me? He'll see that I am trying to trick him, and then he'll curse me instead of blessing me. But his mother replied, Then let the curse fall on me, my son. Just do what I tell you. Go out and get the goats for me. So Jacob went out and got the young goats for his mother. Rebekah took them and prepared a delicious meal, just the way Isaac liked it. Then she took Esau's favorite clothes, which were in the house, and gave them to her younger son Jacob. She covered his arms and the smooth part of his neck, with the skin of the young goats. Then she gave Jacob the delicious meal, including freshly baked bread. So Jacob took the food to his father. My father, he said. Yes, my son, Isaac answered. Who are you, Esau or Jacob? Jacob replied, It's Esau, your firstborn son. I've done as you told me. Here's the wild game. Now sit up and eat it so you can give me your blessing. Isaac asked, How did you find it so quickly, my son? The Lord your God put it in my path, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Come closer so I can touch you and make sure that you really are Esau. So Jacob went closer to his father, and Isaac touched him. The voice is Jacob's, but the hands are Esau's, Isaac said. But he did not recognize Jacob because Jacob's hands felt hairy, just like Esau's. So Isaac prepared to bless Jacob. But are you really my son Esau? he asked. Yes, I am, Jacob replied. Then Isaac said, Now, my son, bring me the wild game. Let me eat it, and then I'll give you my blessing. So Jacob took the food to his father, and Isaac ate it. He also drank the wine that Jacob served him. Then Isaac said to Jacob, Please come a little closer and kiss me, my son. So Jacob went over and kissed him, and when Isaac caught the smell of his clothes, he was finally convinced, and he blessed his son. He said, Ah, the smell of my son is like the smell of the outdoors, which the Lord has blessed. From the dew of heaven and the riches of the earth, may God always give you abundant harvests of grain and bountiful new wine. May many nations become your servants, and may they bow down to you. May you be the master over your brothers, 
and may your mother's sons bow down to you. All who curse you will be cursed, and all who bless you will be blessed. As soon as Isaac had finished blessing Jacob, and almost before Jacob had left his father, Esau returned from his hunt. Esau prepared a delicious meal and brought it to his father. Then he said, Sit up, my father, and eat my wild game, so you can give me your blessing. But Isaac asked him, Who are you? Esau replied, It's your son, your firstborn son Esau. Isaac began to tremble uncontrollably and said, Then who just served me wild game? I have already eaten it, and I blessed him just before you came, and yes, that blessing must stand. When Esau heard his father's words, he let out a loud and bitter cry, Oh, my father, what about me? Bless me too, he begged. But Isaac said, Your brother was here, and he tricked me. He has taken away your blessing. Esau exclaimed, No wonder his name is Jacob, for now he has cheated me twice. First he took my rights as the firstborn, and now he has stolen my blessing. Oh, haven't you saved even one blessing for me? Isaac said to Esau, I've made Jacob your master, and have declared that all his brothers will be his servants. I have guaranteed him an abundance of grain and wine. What is left for me to give you, my son? Esau pleaded, But do you have only one blessing? Oh, my father, bless me too. Then Esau broke down and wept. Finally, his father Isaac said to him, You will live away from the riches of the earth, and away from the dew of heaven above. You will live by the sword, and you will serve your brother. And when you decide to break free, you will shake his yoke from your neck. From that time on, Esau hated Jacob because their father had given Jacob the blessing. And Esau began to scheme. I will soon be mourning my father's death. Then I will kill my brother Jacob. But Rebekah heard about Esau's plans, so she sent for Jacob and told him, Listen, Esau is consoling himself by plotting to kill you. So listen carefully, my son. Get ready and flee to my brother Laban in Haran. Stay there with him until your brother cools off. When he calms down and forgets what you have done to him, I will send for you to come back. Why should I lose both of you in one day? Then Rebekah said to Isaac, I am sick and tired of these local Hittite women. I would rather die than see Jacob marry one of them. Genesis 28 so Isaac called for Jacob, blessed him, and said, You must not marry any of these Canaanite women. Instead, go at once to Padan Aram, to the house of your grandfather Bethuel, and marry one of your uncle Laban's daughters. May God Almighty bless you and give you many children, and may your descendants multiply and become many nations. May God pass on to you and your descendants the blessings he promised to Abraham. May you own this land where you are now living as a foreigner, for God gave this land to Abraham. So Isaac sent Jacob away, and he went to Padan Aram to stay with his uncle Laban, his mother's brother, the son of Bethuel, the Aramean. Esau knew that his father Isaac had blessed Jacob and sent him to Padan Aram to find a wife, and that he had warned Jacob, you must not marry a Canaanite woman. He also knew that Jacob had obeyed his parents and gone to Padan Aram. It was now very clear to Esau that his father did not like the local Canaanite women, so Esau visited his uncle Ishmael's family and married one of Ishmael's daughters. In addition to the wives he already had, his wife's name was Mahalath. She was the sister of Nebaioth and the daughter of Ishmael, Abraham's son. Meanwhile, Jacob left Beersheba and traveled toward Haran. At sundown, he arrived at a good place to set up camp and stop there for the night. Jacob found a stone to rest his head against and lay down to sleep. As he slept, he dreamed of a stairway that reached from the earth up to heaven, and he saw the angels of God going up and down the stairway. At the top of the stairway stood the Lord, and he said, I am the Lord, the God of your grandfather Abraham, and the God of your father Isaac. The ground you are lying on belongs to you. I am giving it to you and your descendants. Your descendants will be as numerous as the dust of the earth. They will spread out in all directions, to the west and the east, to the north and the south, and all the families of the earth will be blessed through you and your descendants. What's more, I am with you, and I will protect you wherever you go. One day I will bring you back to this land, 
I will not leave you until I have finished giving you everything I have promised you. Then Jacob awoke from his sleep and said, Surely the Lord is in this place, and I wasn't even aware of it. But he was also afraid and said, What an awesome place this is. It is none other than the house of God, the gateway to heaven. The next morning Jacob got up very early. He took the stone he had rested his head against, and he set it upright as a memorial pillar. Then he poured olive oil over it. He named that place Bethel, which means house of God, although it was previously called Luz. Then Jacob made this vow. If God will indeed be with me and protect me on this journey, and if he will provide me with food and clothing, and if I return safely to my father's home, then the Lord will certainly be my God, and this memorial pillar I have set up will become a place of worshiping God, and I will present to God a tenth of everything he gives me. Psalm 4 For the choir director, a psalm of David to be accompanied by stringed instruments. Answer me when I call to you, O God, who declares me innocent. Free me from my troubles. Have mercy on me and hear my prayer. How long will you people ruin my reputation? How long will you make groundless accusations? How long will you continue your lies? You can be sure of this. The Lord set apart the God before himself. The Lord will answer when I call to him. Don't sin by letting anger control you. Think about it overnight and remain silent. Offer sacrifices in the right spirit and trust the Lord. Many people say, Who will show us better times? Let your face smile on us, Lord. You have given me greater joy than those who have abundant harvests of grain and new wine. In peace I will lie down and sleep. For you alone, O Lord, will keep me safe. Luke 11 Once Jesus was in a certain place praying, as he finished, one of his disciples came to him and said, Lord, teach us to pray, just as John taught his disciples. Jesus said, This is how you should pray. Father, may your name be kept holy. May your kingdom come soon. Give us each day the food we need and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And don't let us yield to temptation. Then teaching them more about prayer, he used this story. Suppose you went to a friend's house at midnight, wanting to borrow three loaves of bread. You say to him, A friend of mine has just arrived for a visit, and I have nothing for him to eat. And suppose he calls out from his bedroom, Don't bother me, the door's locked for the night, and my family and I are in bed. I can't help you. But I tell you this, Although he won't do it for friendship's sake, if you keep knocking along enough, he will get up and give you whatever you need because of your shameless persistence. And so I tell you, keep on asking and you will receive what you ask for. Keep on seeking and you will find. Keep on knocking and the door will be open to you. For everyone who asks receives. Everyone who seeks finds and to everyone who knocks. The door will be opened. You fathers... If your children ask for a fish, do you give them a snake instead? Or if they ask for an egg, do you give them a scorpion? Of course not. So if you sinful people know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? One day Jesus cast out a demon from a man who couldn't speak. And when the demon was gone, the man began to speak. The crowds were amazed, but some of them said, no wonder he can cast out demons. He gets his power from Satan, the prince of demons. Others, trying to test Jesus, demanded that he show them a miraculous sign from heaven to prove his authority. He knew their thoughts, so he said, Any kingdom divided by civil war is doomed. A family splintered by feuding will fall apart. You say I am empowered by Satan? But if Satan is divided and fighting against himself, how can his kingdom survive? And if I am empowered by Satan, what about your own exorcists? They cast out demons too, so they will condemn you for what you have said. But if I am casting out demons by the power of God, then the kingdom of God has arrived among you. For when a strong man is fully armed and guards his palace, his possessions are safe. Until someone even stronger attacks and overpowers him, strips him of his weapons, and carries off his belongings. 
Anyone who isn't with me opposes me, and anyone who isn't working with me is actually working against me. When an evil spirit leaves a person, it goes into the desert searching for rest. But when it finds none, it says, I will return to the person I came from. So it returns and finds that its former home is all swept and in order. Then the spirit finds seven other spirits more evil than itself. And they all enter the person and live there. And so that person is worse off than before. As he was speaking, a woman in the crowd called out, God bless your mother, the womb from which you came, and the breast that nursed you. Jesus replied, But even more blessed are those who hear the word of God and put it into practice. As the crowd pressed in on Jesus, he said, This evil generation keeps asking me to show them a miraculous sign, but the only sign I'll give them is the sign of Jonah. What happened to him was a sign to the people of Nineveh that God sent him. What happens to the Son of Man will be a sign to these people that he was sent by God. The Queen of Sheba will stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it. For she came from a distant land to hear the wisdom of Solomon. Now someone greater than Solomon is here, but you refuse to listen. The people of Nineveh will also stand up against this generation on Judgment Day and condemn it. For they repented of their sins at the preaching of Jonah. Now someone greater than Jonah is here, but you refuse to repent. No one lights a lamp and then hides it or puts it under a basket. Instead, a lamp is placed on a stand, where its light can be seen by all who enter the house. Your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when it is unhealthy, your body is filled with darkness. Make sure that the light you think you have is not actually darkness. If you are filled with light with no dark corners... Then your whole life will be radiant, as though a floodlight were filling you with light. As Jesus was speaking, some of the Pharisees invited him home for a meal. So he went in and took his place at the table. His host was amazed to see that he sat down to eat without first performing the hand-washing ceremony, required by Jewish custom. Then the Lord said to him, You Pharisees are so careful to clean the outside of the cup and the dish, but inside you are filthy full of greed and wickedness. Fools, didn't God make the inside as well as the outside? So clean the inside by giving gifts to the poor, and you will be clean all over. What sorrow awaits you, Pharisees? For you are careful to tithe even the tiniest income from your herb gardens, but you ignore justice and the love of God. You should tithe, yes, but do not neglect the more important things. What sorrow awaits you, Pharisees? For you love to sit in the seats of honor in the synagogues and receive respectful greetings as you walk in the marketplaces. Yes, what sorrow awaits you? For you are like hidden graves in a field. People walk all over them without knowing the corruption they are stepping on. Teacher, said an expert in religious law, you have insulted us too in what you just said. Yes, Jesus said. What sorrow awaits you, experts in religious law? For you crush people with unbearable religious demands, and you never lift a finger to ease the burden. What sorrow awaits you? For you build monuments to the prophets your ancestors killed long ago. But in fact, you stand as witnesses who agree with what your ancestors did. They killed the prophets, and you join in their crime by building the monuments. This is what God in his wisdom said about you. I will send prophets and apostles to them, but they will kill some and persecute others. As a result, this generation will be held responsible for the murder of all God's prophets, from the creation of the world, from the murder of Abel to the murder of Zechariah, who was killed between the altar and the sanctuary. Yes, it will certainly be charged against this generation. What sorrow awaits you, experts in religious law? For you remove the key to knowledge from the people. You don't enter the kingdom yourselves, and you prevent others from entering. As Jesus was leaving, the teachers of religious law and the Pharisees became hostile and tried to provoke him with many questions. They wanted to trap him into saying something they could use against him. And now may our Lord, who will not be trapped, and who offers the keys to the kingdom of heaven to those the religious previously had locked out, may he now give his blessing to the reading of his word. Amen. 
He's angry. These teachers are a bunch of fakes. He's angry because these teachers of his word ought to be offering people something real, something true. He's angry because they're a bunch of religious, self-righteous, self-serving hypocrites, and Jesus is none too happy about it. They're telling lies about God, and the main one is a lie of separation. God is separate, he's distant, and he's angry. He's angry until you perform the right religious duties, until you wash your hands the right way, until you wash your cup in just the right way, until you give the right amount of everything that you own in just the right way, even the herbs in your garden, and a thousand other things like this were all used as a way of ensuring that you knew that God was separate from you, that he was angry with you. And this message of separation served these guys well. They leveraged it for coercion and control, for power, prestige, and money. They used this lie to become important in the eyes of those with power. They liked to walk around with their flowing robes in the marketplaces. They liked when important people, powerful people, recognized them and honored them. All the while, the people suffered. Jesus looked at this and declared it hogwash. He called them hypocrites, snakes, vipers. In effect, Jesus says, you say that you speak for God, but you don't know God. If you knew God, you would know his justice, not yours, which is so rarely just. You would know his love, his love, which declares that God is not separate, rather that God is here. He is with us. And God is for all people. He is wanting his people and his priests who use his name to tell the truth, to demonstrate the love and justice of God, to live in the reality of the God who is with us, the God who is their present king, because it's true. And the world so desperately needs it. If you read the Bible, and you're left with a God who is separate, distant, petty, and angry, more concerned with how much turmeric you tithe than he is about you loving your neighbor and knowing that you are loved, then you've been sold a lie. And you have completely missed the point of who he is because the point of his word is to show us that God is for us, not against us. That God is good that God is not petty, but abounding in grace and mercy, that God is present and he is full of love. This was the message of all the prophets. God is with you people, wake up, wake up to the God who is with you. He's angry that religion has become a way to crush people's spirits with unbearable religious demands, rather than something that sets them free and makes them new. He's angry with the people who should be shepherding people to the gates of life or actually locking the doors and preventing anyone from finding the way. These people who are supposed to be representing God are representing something entirely different. Jesus begins this reading in Luke by telling us that God is something completely different than what the Pharisees are selling. Jesus says, God's not like that. God is good. When you ask him for good things, he doesn't give you scorpions and snakes. He's a good father. Don't let circumstances and the seeming delay in God's response to your need dissuade you from the truth of his kindness. Like the man who's knocking and seeking and asking for bread, God comes through. So keep asking, keep knocking, keep seeking. God's not angry with you. Don't let others or the circumstances prevent you from knowing the kind of father that you really have. Your father knows what it's like to give his children good gifts. Earthly fathers know what it's like to do that. We know what it's like to give good and necessary gifts to our children. How much more will our good father give good gifts if we ask for them? Jesus is angry at the evil in this world that keeps people from knowing and experiencing his loving kindness. God's not angry with you. He's angry with people and lies that keep you from receiving all that he has for you. What's the gift the good father is giving? He's giving himself. 
is giving the Holy Spirit. How much more will your Heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask Him? This is the ultimate and perfect gift. God is giving us His very life, His presence, His comfort, His wisdom, His heart. He is offering Himself to be with us and in us. Jesus is angry, but not with you. He's come to give you everything. Pray that God will renew your mind so that you will no longer see your Father as separate from you and angry with you, but rather as good and kind. He wants to give you everything. May your soul, may my soul, may we know this well today. That's my prayer. May it be so. Let's continue now in a time of prayer. Feel free to read along with these prayers in the show notes of today's podcast and meditate on these words that are being spoken over you, your family, and our world. And now, let us pray. Lord God, Almighty and Everlasting Father, you have brought us in safety to this new day. Preserve us with your mighty power, that we might not fall into sin or be overcome by adversity. And in all we do, direct us to the fulfilling of your purpose. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. O God, you have made of one blood all the peoples of the earth and sent your blessed Son to preach peace to those who are far and those who are near. Grant that people everywhere may seek after you and find you Bring the nations into your fold, pour out your Spirit on all flesh, and hasten the coming of your kingdom. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And now, Lord, make me an instrument of your peace. Where there is hatred, let me sow love. Where there is injury, pardon. Where there is doubt, faith. Where there is despair, hope. Where there is darkness, light, and where there is sadness, joy. O Lord, grant that I might not seek so much to be consoled as to console, to be understood as to understand, to be loved as to love. For it is in the giving that we receive, in the pardoning that we are pardoned. It is in the dying that we are born unto eternal life. Amen. And now as our Lord has taught us, we are bold to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever and ever. Amen. I want to thank you for joining me today in our time through the scriptures and in prayer. I trust that your soul was blessed. I pray that your soul found rest. I pray that you will be given the strength to take another step today, joyfully even, in the direction of Jesus. Let's keep at it. Let's keep taking one step at a time. Well, hey, friend, before I let you go, I want to let you know that you can follow along in our scripture reading We have a link to the scriptures right in the show notes of the day's podcast. Just click on that and you can read along as you listen along. That can be a unique experience, in part because you are using two forms of communication. It's coming through the ear gate and the eye gate. And the gates of the soul, perhaps, are opened a little bit more as we read along with the scriptures. 
many of you are already doing this through our app, and this might be a good time to let you guys know that unfortunately, our app is going to be going away, I think by the end of this month. Most of our listeners are actually listening through other platforms like Spotify or Overcast, Apple Podcasts, etc. Even YouTube has become a more popular place for people to listen to the podcast. And the app, which we've had for a very long time, almost the entire time that we've had the podcast, has seen a decline in users using it. And the company that we've used over the years for the app was purchased and they have moved over to a different platform, which didn't do what we needed it to do. That combined with the added expense, well, we just had to rethink things and unfortunately the app is going away. So I wanna give our app users a heads up and encourage you to begin to use other platforms that are available. Most all of them are free. You can try the Spotify or Apple podcast. There's another alternative called Overcast and I can begin to put those links in the show notes of the day's podcast. If you are an app user and you have questions about this, feel free to email me at hunter at dailyradiobible.com. I can provide you with the links that are necessary to keep you on board, keep you taking steps with us through this journey in 2024. I appreciate you all for indulging me in that lengthy explanation. And let me finish by saying this. Let's do this again tomorrow. That's my plan. Lord willing and the creek don't rise. Your brother Hunter plans on being right here. Until that time, let's go forward in God's joy. Let's let his joy be our strength. And let us always remember this. That you are loved. No doubt about it. Alrighty, I'll talk to you again tomorrow. You guys take care.